Welcome back to our ongoing journey to perfecting MRI images. Today we keep delving into the world of MR optimization with a focus on a key ingredient in the recipe toward achieving the perfect, the top-notch image quality in MRI. And I'm sure many of you have uh, encountered in your uh, MRI adventures in the past an artifact like this one that left you scratching your head and thinking, what on earth is going on here? Well, fear not, because today we're going to highlight the importance of a parameter that you have likely crossed path with. And I'm talking about the oversampling. The terminology for this parameter varies among the different MRI vendors. You might have encountered it labeled as no face or up, fold over suppression, face or up suppression, and so forth. However, despite the different names, the goal remains essentially the same, fighting back the presence of aliasing on our MR images. A specific type of aliasing is better known as phase wraparound artifact, and this occurs when the anatomical dimension of an object exceeds the defined field of view. Essentially, portions of the object outside the FOV are incorrectly interpreted, facing therefore a phase shift and ending up folded over into the images from the edges. So in the case of imaging the abdomen, you will notice that the left side of the patient body gets wrapped around and spatially misaligned to the opposite side of the image. Similarly, the patient's right side gets wrapped around to the left. Very important, and we'll see later on why this, let's call it wrap around effect, will be mainly occurring into the phase encoding direction. And here is where our oversampling step ups to play. To grasp how it works, let's revisit the basics. So when we decide to activate our no phaser up or we decide to max out to 100% our phase oversampling, we are actually enabling the scanner to perform multiple tasks simultaneously. The most crucial one is that we are essentially doubling the number of phase encoding steps. So by capturing data from areas surrounding our FOV, the scanner can effectively gather the information required to correct or suppress the wrap artifact. This additional data is then employed during image reconstruction to precisely portray the anatomy within the actual FOV, effectively mitigating the distortion caused by potential foldover artifacts. For those that have been following everything MRI for a while, you know, every good story has its potential downside. And oversampling is no exception. I mean, don't get me wrong, as we're gonna see now from our, from our usual table of advantages and disadvantages, increasing the oversampling can be indeed a positive action. And it has a lot of advantages. Uh, along with reducing the aliasing, as we have explained, it enhances the SNR by capturing additional data points beyond the FOV, enabling the MR system to better distinguish signal from noise. However, there is a trade-off, which is longer scan times. Longer scans might introduce motion artifacts, as we've seen before with NEX. And if protocols are uniformly safe with, I don't know, 100% phase oversampling and minimal parameter optimization, this obviously could result in 4-5 minute sequences, maybe even more, potentially limiting the number of patients to be seen. Um, on the flip side, um, reducing the oversampling might have the opposite effect, but obviously other drawbacks. Let's showcase now an example on our MR scanner to understand a little bit more the role of this parameter. So there you go. So you can see that at the moment in the anterior edge of our FOV in the sagittal plane, we are excluding the nose from the brain anatomy. Now we are actually working with a phase encoding direction that is AP, so anteroposterior, and we decide to bring the oversampling from 0% to 50% in order to avoid potential wrap. So focus on the scan time. You can see that at the moment is 3 minutes and 16 seconds. Was that actually so long with no oversampling? 
say let's go back to zero and see what happened. There you go. No, it was just a little bit over two minutes. But what about the SNR? Because you can see at the moment that the SNR is one because essentially no changes have been made. If we bring the oversampling again up to 50%, what kind of implication might have? That's the result. There you go. Almost 25% increase with a jump of 50% in the oversampling value. Definitely not bad, but is it actually worth it? Here we have two XL Turbo Spineco T2 images, both with a phase encoding direction AP. The one on the left lacks oversampling and thus has a shorter scan time, while the one on the right incorporates a small percentage of oversampling and therefore resulting in a longer scan time. So keen observers might have already noticed something I would define as peculiar probably on this. And uh, there you go, you might see it now. You can see that there is the beautiful nose of our healthy volunteer which extends beyond the FOV. Luckily, still outside the brain parenchyma with no significant consequences. You might also notice the posterior part of the head dropping anteriorly for the same reason. Uh, while not a major issue from a reporting standpoint, it's certainly not ideal for achieving top-notch image quality. On the other hand, the sequence on the right, despite a longer acquisition time, exhibit no artifacts at all and technically boast a higher SNR, although the differences might be difficult to be spotted, especially on a 3T scanner like the one in example. I would say very challenging to see the differences between these two datasets. However, before relying on phase oversampling to address image wrap, there might be another option worth exploring, namely changing the phase encoding direction. In this case, for our XL images, we will transition from an AP direction to a right-left direction. This shift means that the nose will not longer be at the center of our concern, but we will need to be mindful of including the patient ears as our case space will be now filled from right to left. As you can see, our current FOV is large enough to encompass the entire anatomy, so theoretically we shouldn't need to add any phase oversampling in this case. However, some MR users prefer to include a minimal amount of oversampling to keep boosting the SNR level. But as we observed previously, this will also increase the scan time. So is this additional step truly necessary? I would say let's find it out together. You can see here SNR has increased, but scan time has increased as a consequence as well. Once again, let's take a casual glance at two XL T2 datasets. The one on the left was acquired with a phase coding direction from right to left, resulting therefore in a shorter scan time since there is essentially no oversampling. Meanwhile, on the right, there is another dataset with the same phase encoding direction, but acquired adding phase oversampling and thus resulting in a longer scan time. Remember, these sequences were acquired on a 3T scanner where SNR is already pretty abundant. While you might be an experienced MR radiographer or radiologist, uh, I'm not quite sure if you agree with me, but the image quality appears, in my opinion, remarkably similar. It is quite challenging to spot any significant difference. However, in that slight minute of scan time difference, patient movement could have occurred, potentially necessitating for, necessitating for the sequence to be repeated. And thus, in, that, in this specific context, opting for a phase encoding direction swap without any additional oversampling might be, my opinion, I would say, the most sensible approach. However, in this journey to understand the optimal use of the phase of sampling, we know that there are a lot of other factors that come into play. So I have attempted to encapsulate most of, most of them, the most significant ones at least, in what is our usual customary tips and tricks list. 
And to begin, we really need to be mindful about the patient size, as this greatly influences the use of the phase over sampling. And while imaging the brain can be quite straightforward and less affected by the patient size, there are other areas like the abdomen which can lead to significant wrap artifacts if we don't strike that specific balance between FOV and oversampling. And speaking of FOV, when we adjust the oversampling, we always have an alternative. As we explored earlier, do you remember that issue with the nose wrapping behind the image? That could have been tackled simply by extending the FOV to encompass the entire anatomy. And this should be always considered as an option. However, have we actually taken into account the impact on the pixel size? We are aware that there are certain MR scanners where FOV and matrix size are closely linked. So boosting the FOV also increases the pixel dimension, potentially resulting in lower resoluted images. This factor should always be taken into consideration. Finally, as we mentioned at the beginning, aliasing mainly occurs uh, on the phase encoding. But hear me out, there might also be situation where it can occur between hand slices. And this predominantly uh, happen when we acquire 3D sequence. In volumetric imaging, in fact, if the image volume extends beyond the field of view in the slab select direction, the phase wraparound artifact might occur between slices at the ends of the 3D partition. As a result, when we deal with 3D sequences, we can either alter the phase or the slice over sampling. Sometimes it's quite easy to confuse them. Make sure you have very clear which part of the body might be wrapped within your FOV, considering that for uh, the phase and slice direction and adjust the oversampling according to this. And with that, we conclude our presentation for today. I think we have covered quite a lot about oversampling. Why not be, it might not be a parameter that we tend to adjust quite as frequently as NEX or TR uh, is crucial nonetheless. As we've seen, if we forget it to actually alter it, this can have implications on our image quality due to wrap artifacts. I hope now we should feel a little bit more prepared to tackle this kind of situation head on. As usual guys, if you have enjoyed this type of content, consider subscribing to our channel. We have a, we have a lot of free videos including podcasts and community updates. Now, have a wonderful day and I will see you around.